Well, see, because I'm a freaking genius game player, or not. <laughs> Check this out. Here's something that's interesting that you can do in the game that I think is obviously... <gasps> Sit frickin' still here. Alright. No. Now, can we just please just zoom in a little bit here? Alright. So you see these three uh, NATO aircraft counters? It's still the, it's now the beginning of the pact segment and we've just resolved all the Soviet ground strikes and the Soviets decided that they had some mediocre units that they wanted to try and put uh, some strikes on on hexes that they were going to attack in the very first action this turn so they would potentially pick up some extra disruptions on those attacks even though if they won the attack they would have to advance into their own ground strike it would be worth it to try and get the slightly better odds and better column shifts uh, because of the disruptions modifiers that occur that we've talked about previously. Um, that didn't work out so well. No result, basically. Uh, the, and in fact, they lost an aircraft. And as, as I look at it for the NATO player, one of the things that I hadn't realized on my first playing of this game is that ground strikes can uh, not, uh, are not the same as ground support attacks that you kind of put on your unit when you're in a combat. And it's not just that they come at a different time in the, in the turn and all the rest of it, but they can actually form a, a different function as well. It's not just trying to put disruptions on units. It's also a form of uh, disincentive for your enemy to want to move into the given hex. And so if we look at this particular hex here, right, it's a clear hex. And I'm going to try and put uh, three, if this strike goes through, I'm going to put three disruptions uh, on this unit, assuming I roll well enough. But I'm also, it's also going to have a, a counter on it for the rest of the, the whole turn that any unit that moves in there is going to be attacked by 3d6. And on a five or a six, they're going to pick up a disruption. So that's a significant uh, dissuasion to want to try and uh, enter that hex and it's a clear hex right it's also a clear hex between two forested hexes uh, so we want to well a city in a forested hex and there's nothing there but there's forest here so that's a good spot to try and put something down here is another good spot but not only because there's a stack of three units that are you know ranging in on Hanover here but we can uh, also slow down movement we can force these guys to Instead of coming directly at us on Hanover, now they can only come from this direction. Uh, they can't come from this direction. And if I get this in here, they won't come in from that direction. So it's performing, uh, performing another function for us as well. Uh, if they go this way, they ha uh, all these units have to pay two movement points to move into here. Yeah. This rough wooded area here, you know, plus the zone of control stuff. So. It's valuable, and over here in Kiel, you know, I'm just uh, I'm popping five on that bad boy there because uh, I know all these guys have already got one disruption on them, except for that uh, that uh, chopper unit there. So we want to try and uh, try and do that, right? Try and uh, degrade the enemy uh, before they attack, and also interfere with the the freedom of movement. So. That was just my little insight. I might as well just pause it here now and roll the dice while, and you can see the result, hey? 